All right, so we're back with some advent of code. This is a refactor video. So we've already done day seven. Day seven, the solution that is in the video on the channel is on the right. And the solution that I've refactored to is on the left in VS Code here. All the tests we wrote are passing still without any changes. So we're good to go. Short recap on the problem. We get this set of instructions to evaluate. So it's either CD or LS. LS has a number of files with sizes. We have to, for every directory that we LS in, sum up these numbers and sum up the numbers for every directory that exists uh, that is a parent of that directory as well. So the parsing is exactly the same between these two examples. I haven't changed it at all, even though that could be another video. So what we end up with here is a set of operations. We've got an enum that is either CD or LS, the two operations that we can actually execute. We use string slices everywhere which means that we need to specify lifetimes in these structs. This is totally fine because if you look at the, if you look at the process part one or the process part two or whatever, the way we have this all set up, the input that comes in is a string slice, which means that the variable that owns it doesn't live inside of this function. So we know that as long as we have this string slice, we're good basically. And the owner of the variable that has shared this string slice with us will live until after our function is done. So we know that all of the data that we reference from this string will still live until after this function is done. So we take our operation, which can be either CD or LS. If it's CD, it can either be a CD into the root directory, which is slash, a CD up, which is dot dot, or a CD down into a directory. And that directory would have a name. If it's an LS, LS will give us a VEC of files or a list of files and directories that are in the current directory. Those can be files with sizes and names, or they can be directories with just names. Now I'm not gonna cover the parsing because it hasn't changed, but for process part one, we do parse the input into this list of commands. So if I show you the types here, we get a VEC of operations as commands. This allows us to interpret that list of commands and modify some state as we go through it. In the original process part one, we do that by building up not just one B tree, but a number of different sets of B trees we iterate over the commands for the first one, and then we do it again for a second one. Now, the key insight here is that we actually don't care about the actual files, and we don't actually care about the contents of the directories at all, really. The only thing we care about in the end is the size of the cumulative set of files in that directory. So we can get rid of a whole bunch of this code. For process part one, after we've parsed out the commands, we iterate over those commands with a fold. We'll get to the fold in a second. This gives us a B tree map that is keyed by a VEC of string slices. So this VEC of string slices is the full directory path as a vector. So it'll be something like slash comma A comma B comma C for a four directory deep structure with the names A, B, C. And the U32 is the size of files in that directory. This U32 in particular is not just the size of the files in that directory, but also all of the directories underneath it. We get those sizes, and this part of the code hasn't changed since the original implementation. The only piece we've changed is all of this processing in the middle. So we iterate over that. We filter for any of them that are less than 100,000. We map over them to get just the sizes, and then we sum it. The way we've abstracted this fold actually translates really well to part two as well, where we get all the commands, we process all of the commands into this one data structure, and then we do the piece of the code that we need to do that is special to part two or special to part one. So that brings us into this fold as being the core of this refactor. So we have a VEC of operations that we iterate over that we call fold on. Fold takes an initial value. In this case, it's an empty VEC and a B tree map that is also empty. And then here we could use a closure, uh, but I've chosen not to. If we look at our original implementation, we use a lot of for loops. We do four command and commands. We do four path and files and directories. We do four I and zero, etc. If we look at what fold does, it takes an initial value and then we get to supply an F or a function that takes that initial value. So we know this because we have the generic variable B, which is used as the initialization type. It's also used as the first element in this function closure. And we also have to return a B. So our function will get the current state or the accumulator, as well as the next item to process. And we could either use a closure here, which we have used for most things like this in past advent of code videos, or we can just fully define a function. 
and we can use this function in that place. It's a little easier to define the closure because a lot of things get inferred for you around the types. If you write the function out like this, you do have to specify all of the types for everything that you're using. So if you're unfamiliar with what fold does on a basic level, we can say we have this list of, let's say numbers here, and we can iterate over that. And if we fold, we can start our accumulator with zero. So the value zero, and then the closure that we pass in gets the value zero and the next item. So the first item is one, so it'll be zero plus one. And then we return that value, which becomes the next accumulator, and we get the next item, which is two, so it'll be one plus two, and that's three. So the accumulator will be three, and the next value x will be also be three, so it'll be three plus three. And then that's the value that gets returned into the sum. So we can break down this structure using fold. If we look at calculate sizes, calculate sizes takes a lot of shared references and returns those shared references. So because we're returning them, we have to actually specify the relationship between the input lifetimes and the output lifetimes. In this case, all of these are related. So we've set up the first argument or our initial state to be a tuple. One we'll call context and one we'll call sizes. Context is this vec of string slices and sizes is the B tree map that we are accumulating the file sizes into. I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but one of the really important things here is that while in a language like JavaScript, you might have to use strings as keys and objects in Rust, when you're working with something like a B-tree map or a hash map, you can use complex structures. So we can have vec of those string slices as the key in our map. So what this ends up being is this ends up being the vec of slash A, B, C with a value of however big the files are in that directory. And then we take the next item that we need to process the command, which is one of the operations. The operation comes in as a reference and the data that we're returning, so these string slices are coming out of the input that we passed into the function originally when we parsed it out. So these references are all references into that original input. So when we return them, all of these are just going to be related to that input and have to live as long. So you can see that we're returning here the tuple that we're also saying that we're passing in as the accumulator, because that's how the fold function works. You get the accumulator, which is this tuple type, and you get the next item, which is this operation type for us. And then we have to return the accumulator, which for us is this whole tuple. And we do that over and over and over. So once we're inside of this function, we can match on each of the commands. And this is us taking the operations and interpreting them and applying them to our state. So we get either CD, root up or down, and context is the thing that is holding the directory that we are currently in. It's a vec because it's easier to pop something on and off of vec if we go up and down. So there's only ever one time that we CD into the root. So in that case, I just push in an empty string. If we go up, if uh, we CD into dot dot, we pop it off of that context. If we CD down into a directory, we push that name onto the vec and this handles tracking whatever directory we're in into this vec of context for each iteration. Now we are doing this mutably, so note that these variables are declared as mutable. And the only other operation that we need to handle is ls, which gives us this list of files. It also gives us the directories, but the only thing we care about is the files. So we can iterate over that and filter map to use an if let to destructure on the file type. We only care about size, so we use dot dot to say, we don't care about anything else in this destructuring. So if files file structurally matches whatever is in the file variable, which in this case is of the files enum. So the files enum is either a file with a size and a name or a directory. It turns out from the question that we don't care if it's a directory at all because we LS in every directory that we care about. So we end up getting this list of files in every directory that we care about. So if it is a file, we return some size. If it's not, we return none. Because this is a filter map, returning some size means the value is kept and returning none means the value is dropped. Because we filtered out everything but the sizes, we can sum those sizes into a U32 to get the sum of the file sizes in that directory. Then we have to deal with the context in some way. One of the key insights to this problem is that every child directory, so the directory that we're currently in, has some size to it. Whatever files are in this directory are that folder's size. But every parent directory also takes on that size. So 
if we have a directory a slash b and we're in b and b has a size of two then a also gets an additional two to its size so in this case the way that i'm dealing with that is i'm using an index from zero to the length of the context so the number of directories that we have in the context and i'm using the entry api on the b-tree map that we're passing around in this fold and i'm using a slice of that context from zero to something as a vec as the key to our b-tree map so zero to zero will just be the root directory zero to one will be the root directory plus the first element zero to three will be the root directory the first three elements if it exists then we add the sum because there could be other folders or other directories that have files that have the same parents if we haven't inserted that directory yet then we insert it with the current sum that we've calculated for the directory that we're currently in and in this way we basically get to just if it exists add this number to it if it doesn't exist initialize it with this number and that will work for all of the directories and all of the files that we ls over of course after we mutate those variables we do have to return them still so we return this tuple of the context and the file sizes and that's it it's a lot more straightforward than the original solution the original solution suffered a lot from me not knowing if we needed to keep these file names around for example it suffered a lot from me not knowing what part two was going to be so i just kind of wrote it out and it was kind of long and windy and while it got the job done it was not as concise and intentional as this free factor is so that's it we just took the processing for calculating the sizes of all of the directories and we pulled that out into its own function that we could then use in fold in both process part one right here on line 116 as well as process part two here on line 131. so i hope you enjoyed that there's stuff we could do with the parsing as well i don't know if i'm going to make another video on that in this exercise but i hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day and i'll see you very soon for day eight.